Hello viewers, welcome to The Federal. I am Vinod Kumar. On July 26, the Union Ministry of Environment has announced that three wetlands, namely Kirikili Bird Sanctuary in Chengalpet, Pallikarnai Marshland in Chennai, and Pichavuram Mangrove Forest in Kadalur district were declared as Ramsar sites. Of the three wetlands in Tamil Nadu, Pallikarnai Marshland is the only urban wetland which is located in the heart of the city. It has met the stringent uh, rules uh, put out by the uh, Ramsar Convention and now it has been uh, declared as the Ramsar site. There are many individuals, environmentalists, birders and many non-governmental organizations have worked for many years to get this coveted international tag for this marshland. However, one of the research foundation, Carrier Trust, has done immense work on the role that played by this organization in getting this uh, international tag stood apart. And today we have Jayashree Venkateshan, Managing Director of the Trust with us to talk about the past, present and future of the marshland. Welcome, Madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So after at least uh, some two decades after this struggle, uh, finally we have got this Ramsar International Tag and Pallikarnai, it has uh, many birds thronging in during the winter seasons and it is one of the migrant place for the many bird species and now it has been given uh, Ramsar sites. So how do you feel about that and uh, why it has taken so much time uh, to get this tag? Thank you for speaking to me. I'm really appreciative of the fact that you've taken time and effort to talk to me, recognize our work. Thank you so much. And uh, as regards how do I feel about it, I'm absolutely excited, absolutely excited and thrilled that this designation has come about to Palikanai Marsh. And this is something that we were actually planning or, you know, thinking about right from the day we started working on the marsh. It's not something that happened just like that. You know, we were always very clear, very sure that we will eventually push for a Ramsar certification. Now, your second question as to why did it take so long? Yeah, if you really look at it in terms of years, 20 years is a long time. It's a generation's time to be investing on protecting a wetland. But if you really look at conditions on site uh, in real terms, in a very pragmatic manner, this is a marsh that was designated as a wasteland. In fact, parts of it still continue to be designated as a wasteland. So to have a wasteland first accepted as a wetland itself is an enormous task. And then for the wetland to be recognized for its biodiversity, for its ecosystem services, was the next big challenge. Compounding these two is the fact that this particular marsh is in a city, not any other city, it's the city of Chennai. And right next to the IT corridor, the educational hub, and you know where development is actually peaking. Because if you really look at how Chennai has grown and expanded, you would find that it's largely been in the southern direction, southern and southwestern direction, and Palikana is located right there. So the demands of development, if you can still call that development, and the demand for conservation had to be reconciled. At some point, we had to come to an understanding as to which is important. So that took a very long time. And if you really seriously look at it, any decent effort, any good effort to protect an area will take time. It's just that we have to be at it. We should not lose hope. I mean, I'm not trying to preach to anybody, but the point is projects like this, programs like this do take a lot of time and we have to be patient. Whenever we speak about this wetland, uh, the wetlands are considered generally considered as uh, a place to uh, drain the flood water and all. And uh, in Chennai, as uh, we have experienced uh, 2015 floods, many people are saying that uh, because of this uh, Pallikarnai marshland, uh, the flood impact has been uh, reduced uh, largely. The Pallikarnai marsh has always been very critical for handling the hydrology of South Chennai. 
especially an area of about 250 square kilometers. The exact number is 234 square kilometers. That is the watershed. Additionally, there are a couple of other smaller watersheds in the area, 9 kilo square kilometers, 13 square kilometers. To protect this entire area from flooding, Palikane Marsh has played a very significant role because it's the kind of place which takes in all the excess water and slowly drains it into the sea. It doesn't flush it into the sea, it drains it into the sea. The biggest support that Palikane Marsh has provided to the city of Chennai, especially South Chennai, is flood mitigation. Now, once this particular marsh was chopped up into bits, in, once it was fragmented by way of construction, by way of development, whatever word you wish to call it, this function of the marsh started getting compromised. In fact, way back in 2005, you know, Chennai experiences decadal floods. So we started looking at Chennai flooding from 2005, not 2015. 2005, we were very sure based on our research, it was a multidisciplinary team of about 20 researchers who studied this place. We were very sure that the destruction of the marsh, the kind of abuse that the marsh was experiencing was, was the reason or the single reason for the flood intensity being so high in that area. But more importantly, even at that time, in 2005 itself, we had said that the next flooding is going to be far more intense because the change that was happening was very, very intense. So we had said, given the pace at which the marsh is losing its character, it is all but near sure that the intensity of the 2015, I mean, the next flood would be very, very high. So flood mitigation is the biggest role that the Palikane Marsh has historically played to the city of Chennai. With regard to this wetland, uh, we are hearing that the acreage of this wetland uh, is being reduced over the years. And uh, from your uh, research and study, uh, will you please tell us uh, how the uh, wetland has been impacted uh, environmentally uh, over the years? Okay. Basically, if you look at what was the original expanse of this particular marsh, we had estimated way back in 2002, when we did our first study on the Palikane Marsh, to be this area is, was about 6,000 hectares, original expanse. And in 2002 itself, 90% of it was lost. We had only 593.64 hectares remaining as marsh. So that was the kind of loss. And this loss has largely been only because land parcels were carted out for development, whether it be institutions or social projects or public infrastructure projects, housing and stuff like that. It was lost only because of that. And as I said earlier, the reason why this had happened is not because somebody deliberately wanted to destroy the marsh, but primarily because this area was classified as a wasteland. So because it was a wasteland, categorized as a wasteland, no great value was placed on the marsh. And that is why it was all right, you know, quote unquote, all right for land parcels to be just given away for various projects or ideas or whatever it is, however important or not important there. So the entire marsh had actually shrunk by 90%. And whatever function it was carrying out historically was also severely compromised. One of the things that was severely compromised is the flows. The inflow, the outflow was severely compromised and that is what contributed to the degradation of the marsh. You are the uh, first organization uh, to take up a, a biodiversity study in that wetland. So will you please tell about your study and what you found out with regard to species or the vegetation there? Uh, will you please tell about the biodiversity sure. of that wetland? Sure. In fact, uh, Care Earth has been leading all facets of research in this area for the last 20 years. But as you very rightly point out, biodiversity research, we were the first to take up. And at that point of time, we were essentially looking at what is the area of the marsh. In fact, the 6,000 hectares to 600 hectares is a result of our study, the first study that we did in 2002. And within the 600 hectares, what kind of diversity of habitats it is? How, many, how much of it is in a marsh condition? How much of it is deep water? How much of it exists as a mud flat? This kind of diversity of habitats, because biodiversity also needs to be pegged at habitat level. So that is something that we did. Then we looked at the kind of plants and animals that are there. But I love to tell you this. In 2002, when we did the study, we recorded about 102 species of birds, 41 species of plants, about six species of uh, insects and stuff like that. But even that was pretty high given the fact that we are talking about an urban wetland. 
But consistently, we've been researching this place for the biodiversity and two or three important things I'll highlight. One, from 102 species, the total number of bird species that we have recorded in Palikane Marsh has jumped to 169 over the last 20 years. Plants from 41, it has jumped to 141. Every living organism, which we call biodiversity, has actually shown only an increasing trend. Far more importantly, all those species which we considered very charismatic, which we think are very, very important in terms of conservation science, have started emerging, appearing, you know, being recorded in the Palikarne Marsh. So that is the second thing. The third thing is, when you come to plants, some of the endemic species of plants known to occur in peninsula in India, especially among grasses, we've been able to record. We've also been able to record a wild rice variety in the area. So the, the description is endless. Suffice to say that each of this is very significant and in terms of conservation value, very, very high. Now, why this place is so rich, so diverse in terms of biodiversity is a question that we are still trying to understand. Because it's not that it's a... Uh, in the midst of wilderness, it's in the midst of some kind of forest area. It's in the midst of a town, a city, where there's so much of human pressure. But still, the biodiversity is showing increasing trend. Now, what is causing that? What is contributing to that increase is something that we are still studying. Yes, you know, uh, Tamil Nadu Forest Department has a, a separate authority for uh, managing these wetlands. And, uh, and uh, it also uh, recently came out with uh, Tamil Nadu Wetland Mission and all. And uh, yes. from your point of view, uh, what are the major uh, challenges uh, in conserving this wetland? And uh, how do you evaluate the uh, the role played by the state or central government uh, in conserving this uh, uh, marshland? One of the things that I want to make very clear is the kind of support, unstinted support that the government gave to these efforts, the conservation efforts, right from the time we started work on it. In fact, the first study in 2002 itself was commissioned to us by the Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board. It was not some foreign donor agency or some external agency. Since then, the government has consistently stayed with the conservation efforts that we have taken upon. So in that sense, we are very grateful. And I'm not saying this to please anybody, but that is a fact. Subsequently also, you know, the management plan work or whether it be the integrated management plan work that we did, whether the application that we did for Ramsan, all these were anchored, supported by the Tamil Nadu Forest Department and the Pollution Control Board, Department of Environment. So that is a given. So that's something that we have to deeply appreciate. And this is what actually has contributed to the success of the project. See, apart from the fact that it was a science-based kind of an advocacy program, a lot of people were involved. We had unstinted support from media. So everybody came together to work for this particular cause. So that, that is something that we have to place on record. Secondly, when it comes to the wetland authority and the wetland mission, you ask me whether there are any challenges. Of course, there are challenges because wetland science itself is very nascent. You know, we are very good at understanding deep water bodies, lakes, and we have, because we have this department called public works department. But the focus has always been on a kind of provisioning service, like how much water can we provide to humans that, that was the approach. Earlier, it was essentially seen as a water body. Now we are seeing this as a wetland. There is a big difference. We are seeing it as a living system. So given the fact that there's not much expertise available in Tamil Nadu, number of people becoming part of the project is going to be something that the government has to dedicate its effort to. It cannot be for the project to succeed, for Palikane Marsh to succeed as a Ramsar site, for many more Ramsar sites to emerge, for this entire effort to replicate, you need a larger pool of people. One organization, Kerat or X or Y, will not be enough. If it has to spread across the state of Tamil Nadu, for which the government needs to invest a lot of energy, resources, money into training people in wetland management. That is something that I see as the biggest thing. All other things can be sorted out once there is expertise available. And this expertise should not be limited to premier institutions. It should be something that the common man can take up. Sure. It should be something that even the smallest of an NGO can take up, become an expert. Only then it can really become a kind of a statewide kind of a model. If you are restricting it, restricting it to a few institutions, it will remain there and it will not replicate. Yes, you said uh, the common man, involving of a common man. 
like in uh, various other science project like uh, we have a, a thing called uh, citizen science uh, like that uh, uh, how a common man can be involved uh, in the process of uh, conserving the uh, these wetlands yeah in fact it has to be anchored there it has to be anchored with local communities you cannot do projects like this by remaining very exclusive now how do we involve it palikanna is a standing example see as soon as we started working on the first study itself we organized ourselves into what was called the save palikanna march forum it's a very voluntary forum no funds no rotation of money nothing like that it has kept the pressure on the entire issue consistently over a long period of time and who are the people who are members of this forum you have people who have been relocated to that place in mailai balaji nagar new residents women's federation women self help groups you also had some resident welfare group all these people came together in fact those days between 2002 and 2005 we used to have a series of events at the march you know a kind of human link you know the chain that we would do every gandhi jayanti we would go there and symbolically hold a fasting kind of an you know event then we had some children being brought there and they painted the palikanna march scenery is you know on the road itself using some fabric the various ways in which community can be involved but my point is slightly different this is normally how we involve communities you know in events in community mobilizing events but i think in this case we should take it a notch further we should also involve communities to get perspectives of what they want the march to be what is their idea what is their vision there is an opportunity for that because i am sure you are aware that palikanna march has a conservation authority for palikanna march in which there is a two tier kind of a setup the higher setup has all the senior government officials the executive part of it has members from the resident welfare association councillors and others participating so where ideas can actually be given by the local community you need active participation you know not just this passive symbolic participation where you go and have a series of events people should be co-opted in it and people should become custodians of it the local com- community should become custodians of it it's after all in their neighborhood that is how i think we should work on going forward and uh, now we have uh, got this uh, ramsar uh, site tag uh, and what is the in store for this wetland uh, in the near future because uh, over the years uh, it has been uh, polluted very much and uh, we are hearing there are some efforts has been taken by chennai corporation and others uh, to uh, clear the pollutants and all so uh, how in the future uh, what is there for this uh, wetland how it can be uh, taken care of in the future uh-huh. now that conservation has become the priority now that it has got the designation as a ramsar site international eyes will be on the project you see getting a ramsar certification is one part of the job if you don't do it well in the sense if you don't conserve the wetland well ramsar convention automatically puts you in a negative list which is very very demeaning and very insulting it's called the montreal list so we should be careful not to get into that list now what the ramsar site designation means is you foster wise use of the wetland wise use of palikanna mart now the government has to decide on what this wise use is is it some kind of sustainable use of some of the wetland resources for example aesthetic value nature learning value all these are wise uses you know non intrusive bird watching all this has to be decided there has been a management plan developed for this particular uh, palikanna marsh conservation every bit of conservation idea that can come about has been listed in it it's a very comprehensive plan and in fact carers led that particular program as well so that needs to be implemented now it needs to be implemented in its fullest form to make sure that palikanna marsh does not lose the integrity of being a wetland at the same time is used in such a manner that the local residents of chennai as well as all the resident fauna and flora benefit out of it this will be the overall kind of approach that it will be. this may involve phasing out the garbage dump this may involve retrofitting some parts of the marsh this may involve in certain instances creating new channels it's a very very detailed plan that needs to be implemented but it's a very very comprehensive plan and so that needs to be done but as i said one well, let me repeat once again getting the ramsar certification is one part of the job far more important is to retain the certification and not get into the negative list thank you very much thank for you. your insights on this uh, 
Palikarnai Mosh getting uh, a Ramsa site back. And uh, thank you for your insights and uh, your work you have done uh, in all these years uh, to get this uh, coveted international tag. And uh, we wish you uh, for your future endeavors too. Thank you very much, Marv.